guys. Welcome to Diamond Delight Edibles. If this is the first time you're joining, my name is Liz and all you regular guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for your support. I just passed that 10,000 mark and oh my god, thank you. Could not have done any of that without your support, guys. I really, really appreciate it. It just means the world to me. You like me. You really, really like me. Sorry, just being an ass, having some fun. <laughs> All right, so today what I'm going to do, now that I showed you how to do a can of, can of sugar and can of syrup, we can now make our gummies um, without using butter and the uh, Gerber is an emulsifier. However, if you want to make them super, super strong, absolutely go ahead and stuff the butter back in there. But this gives you far more control over how strong um, or weak that you would like to make them. Now, you guys are always asking me, um, how much uh, milligrams, etc., uh, something is, and I don't generally tend to answer that very often because it is all dependent upon what you make, how you make it, what your uh, starting THC is, etc. So what I've done is in the um, description there, I've included a link for the calculator that I use. It's a free sign up. Um, it's a little course. You're more than welcome to have a look, take a look at it, um, listen to her. She's really interesting and uh, lots of information. But the calculator you can use for free, and that's what I use. So uh, you, then you can go ahead and you can make your calculations and figure out how strong, etc., that you want to make your candies. And with this, it gives you lots of versatility. So you can go all can of sugar and syrup or half and half, which is what I'm going to do in the recipe. So I will stop babbling on now, and I'm going to get into the uh, ingredients, of course, and of course what we need, and then we'll put all that stuff together and make some awesome uh, gummies. There we go. All right, guys. All right, so for our new gel, um, for our new gummy uh, version here, you're going to use one box of your favorite uh, flavor of Jello, uh, three tablespoons of unflavored gelatin, a half a cup of water for blooming your gelatin, or what I use are these Kool-Aid waters. So they're just flavored water. So I now use these in place of water. Um, they're great because they add more flavor to it, or you can kind of combine some flavors, which is really cool to do. So I use those. They are nice. They're lighter in sugar, and uh, I said just adding more flavor. Now another thing you can do for adding flavor is juice crystals. Um, now I get these at the bulk barn. You can only get them during the summertime, um, but I get these in all different flavors. And I've got two tablespoons of those, again, enhancing the flavor. That way, if you don't want to use or have these flavors, uh, artificial flavors, you can go use those, which work great. The other thing you're going to need is a quarter cup of your can of syrup and a quarter cup of water for our Jello. And then for our candy side, our candy version, so it's going to be like the other one where we, we do the cook, you're going to need a half a cup of regular sugar, a half a cup of can of sugar, or again, you can use a full can of, sorry, a full cup of your can of sugar. Same thing with your syrup. I'm using a quarter cup of can of syrup and a quarter cup of light corn syrup. Again, you can go and use as much or as little of either of those as you like. I like to do the half and half mainly for taste and not to kill people. So that's my kind of my, I don't want anybody rendered completely useless. And then we are going to need a half a cup of water and a quarter teaspoon of citric acid. And as well, if you want to add additional colors or flavors, you can add those optionally as well. And as I said, if you want to add your butter as well and really make them super duper, um, you can do that. You're just going to follow exactly the same thing except the previous, um, the steps from the previous version with regards to adding the butter and the gora gum to emulsify it. Now, um, something else I wanted to say, and the same thing. Now, in this version, I'm not using the clear gel. However, you can use the clear gel exactly the same way as you do in the previous recipe of the regular and sour gummy recipe. That's a good one to follow. It's the most up-to-date and gives you uh, both those versions that you can use. And that's all we need for our ingredients. And now I will get into our equipment and then we will get the best part going. We'll get all this stuff put together. 
All right, so the equipment that you're going to need, just like the other recipes, a double boiler. Um, I just do a makeshift. I get a bowl that will fit into my pot. Make sure that your water does not touch the bottom of your bowl. You will need a smaller saucepan for our candy syrup, two spatulas. You will need your candy thermometer. And you will need a larger pot that your bottom, that your uh, saucepan, small saucepan will fit into ice water, uh, water with ice in it. Blah. A little tongue tied today. And obviously your candy molds. Now a lot of you ask me how many um, candies, uh, gummies you will get out of an, a batch. Now it's all depending obviously on the size molds that you use. If you use about th this large size, I got these from Michaels, you will get about 60. If you use a this size gummy, which is kind of that little bit larger than those big ones, you're going to get a probably about 75 to 100. And if you use the little teeny tiny ones, then you're going to get about um, 150 to 200 of them. So that's approximately how, what that recipe will break down to for you. And now, um, da -da -da. Before we get started, there is something very important that I found out from my other recipe when I was started this is, and I don't do this in the other recipes, but when we're working with the can of sugar and the can of syrups, it is a must that we oil down the sides and the insides of our pot for the candy syrup. Reason being, when it heats up and starts boiling, the oil, the THC oil starts to separate and it sticks to the, the metal of the pot. You might have noticed that if you did that with the can of syrup, which is why I redid the video for that specific reason. So we're going to do things a little bit differently than we do for the regular uh, candy recipe, um, but I'll show you all those details once we get into it. But the very first thing, and don't, we don't want to forget, is we are going to lightly grease our saucepan. And hold on. Just going to dribble a little bit of oil into it and then make sure to work it all the way around. Make sure to get it right into the corners because anywhere that this oil is not, where there's no oil, your THC will sit. The only thing that dissolves THC oil is oil because it is oil soluble. By doing this, we're going to be able to scrape anything that sticks to the sides off much, much easier than seeing all your products sitting there going, ah, what happened? So you said you want to lightly grease it, you don't want to have any excess oil, so make sure to do that up. As well as your spatulas, you want to lightly oil your spatulas for the same reason. When we scrape it off the sides, if these are not oiled, it sticks to it and it doesn't come off. So you want to make sure anything that is going to be touching the THC, the syrup, you want to make sure that you oil. And uh, that's it. I'm going to get into putting our ingredients together and get this started. Oh, one other thing I wanted to cover is um, with your molds. I don't spray my molds beforehand, but I have found uh, sometimes that they do stick. But So what I do is I cure them. So I will spray them or oil them down lightly, let it sit for 20 minutes in the molds, and then wash them out. So it still leaves that oily feel, but it's not going to leave your candies all greasy and makes it far easier for them to come out. As well as you only have to cure them once every uh, few, once every five or six batches or so. So it lasts a long time by doing it that way. All right, so now I promise we'll get into the ingredients in our candy. Alrighty, so the very first thing that we are going to do is we are going to microwave our quarter cup of liquid um, for about 50 seconds till it's boiling and we're going to bloom our unflavored gelatin. Alright, so you're going to evenly sprinkle your gelatin over the top of your liquid, whether you use water or the Kool-Aid water, and then you are going to stir it in. Now, a lot of you guys write in about whether that your gummies did not, are not, um, that they're too sticky, that they're not gelatin enough. That can depend a lot upon your gelatin. I just bought a batch of gelatin because I buy a bulk that um, did not, wasn't blooming. The strength of it or something was not working well. I did two batches and I had almost double the gelatin. So a lot of it is dependent upon your gelatin. Now, one test that I do is when I put in the three tablespoons and mix it in, it should start very quickly to get the texture of um, 
applesauce. It should thicken up pretty quickly. Now this is not, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in another half a tablespoon of gelatin. Okay, so I've just sprinkled on another half a tablespoon and I'm going to stir that in. And now I'm getting that texture of applesauce. Can you kind of see what I mean? That's how you know you're, pro you're at the right strength for your gelatin starting off. If your gelatin is not right from the beginning, if it's mushy, um, I'll show you when we go to put this in. But that's the texture it should be once you uh, once we've got it mixed in. Now we're going to set that aside for five minutes or so to let that bloom. Now, meanwhile, we will add our box of Jello. I'm doing the blueberry, well, berry blue. <laughs> And we are going to add in our boiling water and stir that around and get it dissolving. See? So I said, and then just keep scraping because the jello, because the sides of the bowl are cool it's going to just kind of stick to it. So just keep scraping the sides down as you go and turn your heat on to low. So again, we only want to melt our gelatin over a hot water bath. We don't want it hot at boiling at all. That's what breaks our gelatin a lot of the time is you don't even think that you've got it too hot, but really past um, hot water, probably about 150 degrees ish is, uh, that's about all you need. So that's, uh, that's a big mistake that a lot of people make, myself included. So I'm just going to continue to stir that gently until the um, gelatin is dissolved. And then we will add in our corn syrup and our other stuff. And then once your gelatin and that has started to melt, the sugar takes longer because the sugar... Um, melts at a higher at a bit of a higher heat so it just takes a little bit longer but once your gelatin and that is melted you can add in your corn syrup and your flavor crystals if you're wanting to add um, so you sorry your can of syrup your quarter cup of can of syrup and then your flavor juice crystals if you want to add those in as additional flavoring and again just stir that until it all starts gets incorporated And now for you guys asking for those clear gummies, how do I get my gummies clear? This, you can now, you can have perfectly clear gummies. So I'm going to again continue to stir this and just gently mix it together until everything is melted and combined. Ah, do you notice I got my nails done? So for all of you, those wishing that I'd get them done, they're done. And to those of you who commented, there you go. I know I looked at the videos and thought, man, those are ratty looking hands. So I do apologize. Hopefully it'll be better from now on in the future. I hope you like these a little bit better. <laughs> I think you got to look at them for quite a long time. So why not make them a little bit more attractive? And also just remember to continually scrape down the sides of your bowl so that the gelatin is not sticking to the sides. And just to show you, this is just how hot your water should be. There shouldn't be any boiling, just a little bit of steam coming off of that. That's as hot, that's as, hot as you want to get it. Otherwise, any hotter than that, it's going to break your gelatin. All right, so now that everything's pretty much dissolved, I'm going to add in our gelatin. Now, here's another thing. If your gelatin is, uh, after five minutes or so of blooming, is mushy when you touch it, then your gelatin is not strong enough. So whether it's old and it's weakened, or there are different gelatins with different strengths. If it is nice and firm to the touch and no mushy, you're good to go. So I just split this up into pieces and plop her in. 
and you're just going to let that, you're just going to gently again stir that until it completely melts. And again, if you start to see any kind of foaming, make take it off your heat immediately. It's getting too hot. So I'm just going to let that set. I'm going to continue to stir that until my gelatin is fully melted. Once your gelatin is melted and everything looks good and it is nice and translucent, just set it off to the side and now we're going to start our candy syrup. All right, for our candy syrup, in goes our half a cup of white sugar, our half a cup of can of, can of sugar, bleh, our can of syrup, quarter cup of can of syrup. Like I said before, you're more than welcome to play around with your different measurements on that. As long as it equals a half a cup, either way, doesn't matter. And our quarter cup of light corn syrup. Our half a cup of water. And our quarter teaspoon of citric acid. And you are going to gently stir that till to your syrup, till your sugar and water and everything's just combined. And then once you're combined here, turn your heat on to medium high to start. And then we're going to drop it down to medium once it begins to boil. And you're just going to continue stirring this. Make sure to get all around the edges because the sugar likes to sit there. And so we're going to continue to stir this until it uh, starts to boil. Now, in all of my, in all the other candy recipes, I say as soon as we start boiling, we're going to stop stirring and use our brush. Not in this recipe. And I'll show you once it starts boiling. As I said, the oils, yeah, I got a little syrup on the burner there. So the oils start to separate out with the heat. And until it gets all to the same kind of temperature, it will they will stick to the side so we're going to have to continually work the sides of the pot but you're going to want to be very very gentle because we don't want to spit dirt into the syrup so as i said i'll show that all to you once it gets there now you'll start to notice as um as it's starting to heat up if you scrape the sides of your pot see all that that's your oil and that's what we want to make sure gets back into our syrup. So I usually have to use the two. Um, you want it, that's why I said you have to grease both uh, spatulas here, work it off, get it back into the syrup. And we're going to have to do this continuously through the whole cooking process. So at any time that you see any darkness starting to form on the sides, Make sure to scrape it down. And as your syrup gets hotter, you can just put your spatula in and it'll just melt it off. And also make sure when you are scraping the sides of your pot, hold on to the handle firmly. I've done it before, I wasn't paying attention and whoops! And the last thing you want is molten lava being poured anywhere other, keeping it in the pot. So when your syrup begins to bubble, starts boiling, you're going to attach your candy thermometer. And remember this is normally where I say we stop stirring? Not this time. So we're not actually going to stir it. What we're going to do is just to continually scrape around the sides of the pot, but don't go deep into the syrup. We just want to stay around the bubble area. And you just want to keep pulling this in. So this is the alcohol, uh, the excess alcohol and stuff burning off and any impurities um, that are in it. So see how it is gathering up on the sides? That's what we want to make sure it gets back into our syrup. Whatever's supposed to cook off will cook off. Whatever is good will stay in. So again, just gently, don't go into the stir syrup, just gently keep going around the sides. And you'll do behind the candy thermometer towards the end. 
and we are going to cook our syrup too. If you want a soft candy, you're going to cook it to 260. If you want a firm candy, you can go as high as 280. 280 is soft crack. I'm going to go to, just before that, I'm going to take this to 275. But you see what I mean about the oils, how they just continue, they'll keep going to the sides of the pot. As it heats up and gets up to temperature, it will, it will, uh, the oils will get incorporated. And once your syrup is boiling in that, you want to just turn your heat down to medium. Just medium, a little above medium. Nice, and then don't forget to get behind in the, behind the uh, thermometer, because it will hide in behind there. I love the smell of this syrup cooking. It's, oh, it smells so awesome. Oh, and just as a, as a tip uh, for safety, always have a fan, either an overhead fan, I've got one going, um, or the if you've got an overhead on your stove. Regardless, when you're ever working with tinctures, even though you, you've worked with them in the dehydrated, you have, most of it's cooked off, some of it may not be, and you just want on the safety side, always have a fan going and leave don't be sparking anything up in the in the general area so you've had your gelatin sitting over on the side and you have a look and you've noticed that there's all this white icky foam stuff and you're sure positive that you didn't do it high on high heat the heat didn't get too hot that will happen sometimes if the gelatin is old and it's starting to break down so if you do see that in order to compensate for that Bloom another tablespoon of unflavored gelatin and we're going to add it into the candy mixture at the end. That's going to help us compensate for the gelatin that's broken in our mixture here. So that will help it. So anytime that your candies come out super sticky and you can't get them out of the molds, the reason is is because the gelatin is not gelling properly. So uh, there's a really handy tip there for you guys. Now, in order to get that out, because I don't want that to go in my syrup, I'm going to run this through a strainer before we put it into our syrup. So now, I, my actually my syrup, while I was babbling away there, is getting close to temperature. I've got my ice water ready to go. And as soon as it hits temperature, I'm going to drop the bottom into the pot. And once the temperature starts coming down and the cooking process is stopped, I'm going to set it to the side until the temperature comes down to 240 before we add our gelatin in. So just watch your thermometer until, until the temperature starts coming down and your bubbles start stop bubbling. And then just set it to the side and set until your temperature comes down to 240. Alright, so now my syrup is cooled, and as I said, because I don't want that white foamy stuff into my syrup, I'm going to use a strainer to pour it through. That way it'll catch all the chunks of gelatin that is being bad. And I'm going to mix that in. Now I also, uh, what I did was I bloomed uh, another tablespoon of gelatin in a quarter cup of liquid and we're going to add that in a little bit in a little bit so right now you're going to stir your jello and your candy syrup until it is all combined and if you find that your syrup is a little too sticky and it's solidified you can put your heat on to minimum you just want to heat the bottom to get the syrup off the bottom And make sure that you do that you scrape the sides. And if you said if you find that it's too hard coming off, turn your heat on, and it'll eventually start to melt. So you just want I said you want to keep doing that until everything is completely melted and all the same temperature. All right. So now that everything is all melted together and nicely mixed. Now, this is a test that I do to uh, determine whether my syrup is um, going to gel correctly. Is I pull it up, and you see how it just goes in a nice, smooth syrup, 
Um, it doesn't really steam to start gelling or anything. It stays in a fine line. So that's kind of telling me that this is um, going to turn out way too sticky. It's going to come out, um, was it like you can't get it out of the molds? It's uh, more candy than the gelatin. So that's what I said about my gelatin breaking there. I knew that was going to happen. So I've added in, I'm going to add in the additional gelatin that I bloomed. And I'm just going to stir that until it's completely dissolved. So now if you want your syrup just translucent, that nice clear, there you go, you've got it. You can go ahead and put it into your bottles, your squirt bottles, or use the, um, the little eyedroppers for dispensing into your molds. Um, but however, I never like to keep things plain. So I'm going to do half and half where I've got translucent and solid. And also just to give you a look to see how to go about doing that. All right, so now when after adding the additional gelatin in, now when I do my test, you'll see it's thicker and it'll start to split up and almost solidify in mid-air. So that's how you know it's likely going to set correctly. <laughs> I still have had it not do things correctly uh, occasionally, but that is a very good indication uh, that you're safe and good to go. So if you want it translucent, go ahead and put it into your bottles at this point. Um, or use your um, eyedropper dispensers or however it is that you get it into your molds. However, I of course need to always get fancy. So I'm going to split this into two colors. So I've got um, half of it translucent and half of it as the solid blue. Whoops. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to eyeball this here. If you want to be exact, you can pour it into a measuring cup and split it exactly. However, I've been doing this from this pot for quite a while, so I'm pretty good at it sometimes. So, because I mixed the blue with the green, because obviously the green um, from our can of syrup and our sugar, so it's turned out um, a little bit greenish, and I actually want this to be blue, so I'm going to add in a little bit of blue color, and then on one half, I'm going to add in white. So this one, I'm mixing in a few drops of uh, blue. You can use any kind of food coloring, the gel base, oil base, water base. For this, for this particular um, candy recipe, does not matter. So we're just going to get that stirred in. Ooh, that's a pretty color. You can see it on the white. That's nice. That's a nice kind of teal color. Then in my other half, I'm going to pour in some of the blue, kind of the same kind of teal, but this is going to give me the solid background is the white. Now, if you guys have white um, on hand, make sure that you shake it really, really well. If you've had it sitting for a while, it does separate, and you will find that um, if you pour it in, you're going to get little tiny white. It doesn't go well. You get little white lumps or something like that. It just doesn't blend really nicely. So make sure to shake it really, really well. You can almost hear it um, come back together. It's like you can almost hear the water at the top and then all kind of comes together and sounds a little bit thicker. So I'm going to pour a little bit of that in. And, ooh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? So again, you're just going to thoroughly mix that in until it is one complete uniform color. And once I've got that, I'll get it into my bottles and we'll get this into the molds. There's a little trick I learned the other day, kind of by accident. That's how most things happen. So um, if you want to have a half and half candy where you've got the clear on the bottom and the uh, solid on the top, um, what you can do to easily make that happen is use your hand blender on this. You whip a bunch of air into it. It will, once you put them together, the air is all automatically going to bring the solid color up to the top. Or if you want to do that with the, um, 
If you want it the other way around, then aerate your uh, clear. But you're going to have to wait a while for the bubbles to come out because that's going to make it not so clear. So I'd recommend if you just putting the solid on the back. You can do that. It, uh, it's just a quick way of doing it. Otherwise, you have to um, pour one layer, let it set a little bit, and then pour your second layer. Well, aren't I just a cesspool of useless information today? I'm just going to pour this into my squirt bottle. This should make a full, almost a full bottle. Or a little bit more. See? Bang! Almost right on. And now, if you guys have, haven't seen these before, these are the best squirt bottles ever. Um, they just make putting it into the mold so much easier, especially if you want to blend colors. Absolutely, highly recommend these. Um, I'll put, I've got, there's a link for them in the, the uh, description there for you to make it easy if you'd like to order them. And I'm just going to do my clear and we'll get this going. Alright, so as I said, I always do two colors. I always like doing that. So I do combination. I'll either just whoosh, or if you want a half and half, you can do it that way. Or you can go this way. Ah, freestyle, whatever you like. And that's it. Get them all into your molds, and you're going to put them in the fridge for a minimum of two to four hours. Uh, sometimes they've got to go overnight. Now, if you let them go overnight and they're still sticky, you can't get them out of the molds, put them into the freezer for a few hours. Let them freeze up. Take one mold out, of a time, out, out at a time and pop them out as quickly as possible. If, they still, if they're still stuck, the first few will come out. If it starts to stick, throw it back into the freezer, work on another mold. Put them into a double boiler, melt them down on low heat, and add another tablespoon of gelatin, melt it, and recast them. And that will fix that problem for you. And that's it. Um, I don't know. I'll come back, we'll, we'll pop these out so you can have a look at them, and I'll show you how to sugar coat them. Not that sugar coating is that difficult, but you can coat them with a can of sugar and uh, just show you an easy way of doing it. And uh, that'll be it. We'll say goodbye. Candies have set, and you can do this in a bowl, or I found that doing it in a large uh, plastic bag worked a lot easier. So in this, I put a half a cup of regular sugar, a half a cup of can of sugar, and I put a quarter probably about a quarter cup of the flavored drink crystals that I used in my recipe. Again, the drink crystals are totally optional for you, just adds that little bit extra flavor. And then I added about a half a teaspoon of citric acid because I wanted these to be a little bit more on the sour side. If you just want to have just a little bit of a bite but not really sour at all, I add a quarter teaspoon. So I'll do those to my sweet ones and then to the sour I use a half a teaspoon of citric acid. I don't recommend using much more than that. One, it's not going to, the sour flavor isn't that great, and um, it can also melt your candies because citric acid, acid is water soluble. So, simple enough. So you can actually see it. Oh, and I also have, sorry, a wire, a wire wrap with parch line, oh, parchment paper line lined on top of it for them to dry. So I just pop them out. These guys are popping out nicely. And I get, and what I do is I do one mold at a time. So I leave the rest of them in the fridge um, because otherwise they start to warm up and they can, uh, makes it difficult sometimes for them to come out of the mold. So I just take them out one at a time. And once I get them all in the bag, I fill it with a little bit of air and squish them around. And I just fish them out and shake off the excess sugar and we just lay them out to dry here just like all our other candies and that's it 
this is just a slightly smaller mold that I use. Same thing. Now see, sometimes you'll do that and you'll see you think, oh no, they're not going to come out. They're stuck. Just pull the edges away and then they just, they'll just come right out. Now if you do that and it doesn't come out, that's when you would put them into the freezer. So again, you see that? Just around the edges to pull it away and they're good to go. And that's about it. I'm just going to go through and sugarcoat the rest of these guys and then I'll be back to say goodbye. Well guys, that's my little demo there on your uh, can, of, can of syrup, can of sugar gummy bears. I hope you enjoyed the demo. As always, if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask. And thank you guys so much again for your support. And let's get to the 50,000. Woohoo! All right. So you have an awesome rest of your day. And thanks again for watching.